Through the day I went completely mad, this job would get harder, but I find it so much easier. <laughs> oh, I'm pointing my feet, that's rude to the Koreans, sorry. <laughs> it's true, look it up. I know lots of facts, actually. Ring around the rosy, pocket full of posies, ashes, ashes, we all hate plague. <laughs> we hate plague. Because that's what it was, well, except for you. Beetlejuice. Shut up. But there's a thing throughout all of it. Death. Death is almost as scary as, as madness. Death's the end. Death, well, maybe it's the end. Depends who you ask. Standing in pier. Madness. That's a different kind of end. Perhaps a different kind of beginning. But the idea of death, death is interesting because we all have stories, death, Grim Reaper. Wouldn't it be interesting to hear more about that? This is usually where the voices jump in and say, yeah. yeah. I thought you'd faded away for a moment. Angela Roquette is a first time inmate at the Spooky Stage. She comes to us from far away and has brought her book, my lovelies, and will read you a little sample about the Grim Reaper. Some of you may already know who I am. I actually am from Missouri, and I came down here um, What's that? I am a part of a group of girls online who started talking about open stage and showing videos and um, they kind of suggested maybe you should come down here, do a book signing, read a little. So here I am. My series is called Reapers Incorporated. It's about a reaper named Lana Harvey and she works for Grimm who's the CEO of Reapers Inc. in the afterlife. And this is kind of where her journey begins. It's chapter two, for some of you that have read, so if you're saying, oh no, this isn't where it begins. This is just the sort of shortest little segment I could find. So. Funeral home chick. That's how I describe Grimm's office. It was painted the most innocent shade of black. A pot of daisies sat on either side of his coffin-shaped desk. Awards and framed photographs lined the walls, while a glossy window overlooking most of the city swallowed the far wall. I could see the harbor, tiny in the distance, and wondered how much longer Grimm would keep me waiting. Grimm was the mayor of Limbo City, an owner of Reapers Incorporated. As if being mayor and owning the most successful business in eternity wasn't enough, he was also the president of the Afterlife Council, and the only member with an indefinite term because no one else in limbo had half as much power or influence. Some thought that the fates were powerful enough to take his place, but Grimm had the fates wrapped around his finger. He saved them from going out of business and helped them establish their factory in Limbo City. They were indebted to him and supported his position of power. Sorry to keep you waiting, Grimm's gravelly voice made me jump. I turned to watch him walk in the room. He wore his usual slate gray, slate gray suit with a black tie. His hair was shiny and neatly combed. He reminded me of a 40-something lawyer, even though he was well over 2,000. The lines around his eyes and mouth were the only signs of aging I could see, and they seemed to deepen as he looked me over. He cleared his throat and smoothed down the folds of his jacket before sitting. There's a position that will be available soon. Someone on the Afterlife Council strongly suggested you. Do you know anything about this? He didn't seem pleased. No. What kind of position, I asked, wondering which council member it could have been. I didn't know any of them well, and aside from shaking their hands after they were voted in, I couldn't recall meeting one of them at any other time. That's not important. You'll get all the details when and if you get the job. Until then, your work will be closely reviewed. You should follow the rules if you have any desire to obtain this promotion, or any promotion in the future. Of course, I couldn't help but smile now. Someone thought I was worthy of a promotion. So what if it wasn't Grimm? He narrowed his eyes at me and leaned back in his chair. You know, 
For as long as you have worked for me, it is very surprising that you're still a low-risk harvester. You've accumulated just enough soul violations to delay any possibility of promotion, but not so many that you would be considered for termination. He folded his hands on top of his desk and sneered at me, like an IRS auditor who had just caught wind of an illegal operation. Death and taxes, not only certain, but cocky as ever. <laughs> I'd only known of one reaper who had suffered termination, which is just a fluffier way of saying he was executed. He got caught selling souls on the ghost market after reporting them CNH, currently not harvestable. <laughs> after that, anyone who reported more than two unharvestables in a year went through a meticulous investigation during which they were demoted to low risk status. I was already a low risk harvester, even though I had never been considered for investigation. My soul violations were all classified as transfer errors. And since the souls in question were only destined for the already overflowing sea, I got off with a slap on the scythe. <laughs> Grimm stared at me after a few seconds, prolonging my anxiety as long as his schedule would allow. And then he let go of his iron gaze and sighed. Take tomorrow off. If you do happen to get this promotion, the opportunity for a vacation day will be suspended for an undetermined time. I raised an eyebrow. Something wasn't making sense. Only high-risk harvesters had to worry about suspended vacation privileges. The importance of their work required them to be available at a moment's notice. They took care of the more important souls, harvesting at their time of death, rather than pre-burial like I did. A low-risk harvester like me never jumped that far up the totem pole. Ellen has your soul docket waiting out front. Grimm gave me a nod and started going through his mail. I didn't bother saying goodbye as I slipped out of his office. <laughs> <laughs>